From special effects inspired by 80s comedies to the near casting of a Harry Potter star, there's much more to everything, everywhere, all at once than meets the eye. According to Vulture, the genesis of everything, everywhere, all at once can be traced back to the most unlikely of movies, Sherman's March. The 1985 documentary introduced directors Daniel Scheinert and Daniel Kwan, known collectively as the Daniels, to the concept of modal realism. From there, they began to do some digging and started learning more about professional theories regarding the multiverse. A common theme in everything from art to mathematics, the concept was immediately intriguing to the filmmaking duo, since it appealed to their maximalist tendencies as artists. The pair are always looking to cram as much stuff as possible into their directorial efforts, whether that be a music video or a movie. So, being able to explore many different dimensions was extremely engaging to their creative sensibilities. Despite how ridiculous the works of the Daniels seemingly are, these two directors were also extremely interested in the science behind these concepts and did their research accordingly. This gave some tangible grounding for all the madness that would eventually be unleashed in their exploration of the multiverse in everything, everywhere, all at once. It's impossible to imagine a version of Everything Everywhere All at Once that isn't anchored by Michelle Yeoh. She's the heart and soul of the entire picture, while scenes in the movie even use actual archival footage of Yeoh at events like the premiere of Crazy Rich Asians. Everything Everywhere All at Once and Yeoh are deeply intertwined, so it's somewhat insane to realize that she wasn't the first choice for the character of Evelyn. Originally, this figure was going to be a man and would have been portrayed by another legend of the silver screen, Jackie Chan. This is going to be painful. You're right about that. Co-director Daniel Scheinert admitted to The Hollywood Reporter that he and Daniel Kwan originally thought that everything, everywhere, all at once needed a male lead since it was an action movie, with the pair eyeballing Jackie Chan to fill that role. Yo was always meant to be in the film, but she was originally assigned the part of the protagonist's wife. However, as they continued working on the film, the directors got the idea that the story would be much better if Yo's character was a protagonist. Suddenly, a whole new world of narrative possibilities opened up. While this meant abandoning the idea of casting Chan, it's impossible to complain about his absence considering how excellent Yo is as Evelyn. In August 2018, The Hollywood Reporter revealed that Michelle Yeoh and Aquafina were in talks to headline everything, everywhere, all at once. It was a casting choice that would reunite the two performers after they worked together on Crazy Rich Asians, who was hot coming off the art house hit The Farewell. However, by January 2020, as everything, everywhere, all at once was to begin filming, Aquafina was no longer part of its cast. The official reason for this development was never revealed, but it was presumably due to scheduling conflicts. While losing Aquafina may have been a bummer, it didn't slow down everything, everywhere, all at once, which plowed ahead with principal photography and scored other lead performers like Stephanie Hsu. Michelle Yeoh's legendary career has spanned countless genres and iconic films, yet even she had never appeared in a movie quite like Everything Everywhere All at Once before. Tasked with playing protagonist Evelyn, Yo got to build on her gifts for comic timing and fight choreography, but also got to play in a much more absurdist world than she'd ever previously participated in. Some actors might balk at being asked to join such an unusual feature, but Yo was enthusiastic from the start, mainly because of the prospect of getting work with directors Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheinert. They thought, you know, she can do this. Yo was also enthusiastic about getting to play a character like Evelyn, who inhabited an archetype that she felt was often erased entirely in cinematic narratives. Not only getting to inhabit that role, but getting to play her as an empowered protagonist filled Yo with excitement. On top of all that, Yo was further enticed to join Everything Everywhere All at Once because of how much dedication everyone involved had to the movie. Such passion is infectious and proved to be a key ingredient among many to securing Yo's participation in this unforgettable unorthodox movie. Having Evelyn work in a laundromat is a great choice on so many levels for everything, everywhere, all at once. For one thing, it puts this character and her family in the midst of working-class life. Just seeing her walk around in her workplace makes it clear what kind of financial difficulties she navigates daily. It also creates an instantaneous underdog sensibility in Evelyn that contrasts nicely with her eventual transformation into a warrior who can pluck abilities from differing dimensions. But there's also a deeply personal reason for making this Evelyn's occupation. Director Daniel Quan revealed to Digital Spy that his grandfather ran a laundromat when he came to New York City from Hong Kong. Remembering his dad's stories about growing up directly above a laundromat, Quan knew what occupation Evelyn had to work in. Quan also noted that the laundromat turned out to be a perfect extension for the film's central message of finding the beauty in seemingly throwaway parts of everyday life. 
The cast of Everything Everywhere All at Once is perfect proof of how a movie is defined by every member of its ensemble and not just its leads. Michelle Yeoh and Ki Wei Kwan are indispensable in their performances as the story's protagonists. But this movie wouldn't be complete without the terrific supporting turns from Jamie Lee Curtis and Stephanie Hsu, among many others. All these impressively committed performances swell together to cement the creatively bold aesthetic of the entire movie. And nobody was more aware of how important all these actors were than Michelle Yeoh. Yeoh noted to the AV Club that her character would not be able to function in the narrative without the film supporting characters and performances. Such richly detailed and human turns were especially critical in the eyes of Yeo, because everything everywhere all at once is such a heightened sci-fi story trying to convey a deeply grounded message about the importance of kindness. Balancing those contrasting concepts could have gone badly wrong under other circumstances, but Yeo was grateful to be surrounded by a superb ensemble cast that executed the movie's complex tone and message with finesse. Before they directed Everything Everywhere All at Once, filmmaking duo Daniels made their feature-length directorial debut with the 2016 indie film Swiss Army Man. It was just the kind of project that immediately cemented the pair as directors to watch, thanks to its complicated tone and bold imagery. Plus, it contained a go-for-broke performance from Daniel Radcliffe as a corpse that can talk, fart, and anything else you can imagine. Radcliffe was an essential part of why Swiss Army Man didn't collapse under the weight of his own strangeness, so it's no surprise that the Daniels wanted to reunite with the actor on Everything Everywhere All at Once. Radcliffe revealed on the A24 podcast that he would have appeared as a hot dog dancer in a fictional movie that plays in Evelyn's laundry. Matt. Radcliffe was incredibly excited about the idea of being in the film with such a wacky role. However, the actor couldn't do the part solely because of scheduling conflicts with his stage performances in a series of plays in London. In the world of New York theater, Stephanie Hsu has already built up a remarkable career. Prominent roles in musicals like Be More Chill and the SpongeBob musical have helped solidify her as a performer to watch out for. In the domain of movies, though, Shu's experience is a bit more limited. Though she landed a massive breakthrough on the big screen thanks to her work in Everything Everywhere All at Once. Talking with Collider about her experience shooting the movie, Shu said that this being her first major motion picture role inspired her to just go for broke in her on screen performance. Being unfamiliar with how film sets operate, Shu threw caution to the wind and embraced all the possibilities of her idiosyncratic character. She noted that it was easy to get into that mindset because of how committed everyone else was on the set of the film. Shu couldn't have asked for a better or more unique launch pad to begin her feature film acting career. I love movies. I want to make movies forever and ever. It is the best. In 2002, Ki Wei Kwan stepped away from acting due to a lack of opportunities for Asian actors. The truth is, as I got older, there was just not a lot of opportunities for an Asian actor at that time. After years of working in behind-the-scenes roles on various projects, his performance in Everything Everywhere All at Once was his first acting credit in roughly two decades. Kwan noted that his lengthy absence from acting meant he was extremely nervous before the camera started to roll. However, Kwan recalled that the moment the camera started rolling, he was brought back to his days of acting as a kid and felt immediately comfortable again. Making his time on the Everything Everywhere All at Once set even more pleasant was Quan's excitement over getting to work with Michelle Yeoh and everyone else in the cast. Plus, Quan was enormously grateful for the script that the Daniels wrote, the kind of screenplay and character he'd always wanted to work with but had never gotten the chance to embrace until now. Everything Everywhere All at Once is an incredibly high-concept motion picture involving raccoons tugging on people's hair, enormous pessimistic bagels, and everything in between. It's no surprise that it required lots of visual effects wizardry to bring it to life. What is surprising, though, is both how these visual effects were created and how many resources were dedicated to those effects. In a breakdown by IndieWire, it was revealed that 80% of the visual effects shots in Everything Everywhere All at Once were handled by just five people. Although this indie feature didn't have armies of technicians and artists at its disposal, Everything Everywhere All at Once did have a dedicated team of visual effects wizards who found inspiration in some all-time great movies. Specifically, the group looked towards 1980s classics like Ghostbusters or Who Framed Roger Rabbit for inspiration on how to make tangible images without relying solely on CGI. This dedicated gaggle of artists also turned to programs like After Effects to realize many of the most complicated visual effects details in the film. They didn't have cutting-edge technology on their side, but the film's visual effects team delivered state-of-the-art work with endearingly ramshackle means. Defying the odds, Everything Everywhere All at Once made its box office prowess apparent early on when it managed to increase 2% in its second weekend of wide release. Movies almost always decrease in ticket sales week to week, but the word of mouth kept this one around in the public conversation. Everything Everywhere All at Once held on astonishingly well week to week, 
and despite opening and limited release on the last weekend of March 2022, was still playing in wide release by the 4th of July. The film eventually cracked $70 million domestically, nearly three times its $25 million budget. Everything Everywhere All at Once also proved to be a lucrative enterprise in foreign markets, where it managed to make another $30 million. With this haul, Everything Everywhere All at Once cracked $100 million globally. Nobody could have ever imagined this movie doing this well. But then again, it's fitting that a movie as unusual as Everything Everywhere All at Once would have a box office run that breaks all the rules. 